والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون Three things mentioned in this part of the verse. Allah says, those who do not associate any form of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they never ever call out to anyone besides Allah. لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر they do not call out to anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their needs. No act of worship to be rendered for anyone or anything besides your maker. Don't take that risk of rendering an act of worship for anything else. Don't even go there. The Christians did it, they have failed. The Jews did it, they have failed. The others did it, they have failed. The traditionalists did it, they have failed. What makes Islam the fastest growing religion today? What is appealing to the intellectual mind of the females who are accepting Islam in their thousands on a daily basis? The intellectuals is the fact that you have a direct plug-in with your maker. Go and read the articles. Why I accepted Islam. Just Google that and see one after the other. They say this direct plug-in is unique. You talk to your creator, you confess your sin to nobody besides your maker. No one needs to know what you did, never. And the minute you say, oh Allah, I regret, I admit, I seek your forgiveness, I won't do it again. Those four conditions, your sin is wiped out, deleted, gone, completely forgotten. That's the gift of Allah. This is Islam. To surrender. To whom? To the one who made you alone. This is what Islam is all about. And this is why shaitan comes to us and makes us feel, I need to worship this Mawlana and this Shaykh. We are simply scholars and students of Islam. Our duty is to relay the message. There is nothing grand about this man standing in front of you. I am exactly like you and so are all the other mashayikh and so on. Yes, we respect them because of the knowledge they have. But at the same time, we never render a single act of worship. There is a fine line between respect and worship, which a lot of people end up crossing without realizing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Wallahi, the core message of every Nabi, he says, watch out, be careful, never render an act of worship for anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us all search in our lives. Let's never worship money, never worship items, never worship people, never worship objects, nothing at all. We worship Allah alone. لِلَّهِ الْأَمْرُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ بَعْدُ For him is the command from the beginning, before everything, and at the end, after everything. Solely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing in this verse, this part of the verse, Allah says, لا يقتلون النفس They do not kill the, the, a person. They do not commit murder. No murder at all. You don't kill someone. Not at all. In the same way, I have a right to live. To live, you have a right to live. We all have that right to life. Yes. If there is... A judge in a court sentencing a person with the correct constitution, finding them guilty according to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that requires their execution. That is something else. It is another matter. But here we're talking of murder. No one should commit murder. No one should ever think, even if you hate a man, don't say, I feel like killing him. No, no. He has a right to live, just like you do. I had a young boy who emailed me telling me, I feel like killing those who sin. And I told him, brother, you are destroying. Firstly, you are destroying what is called mahallu da'wah. We are taught to call people towards goodness. If everyone was upon the goodness, who was left for there to be calling? Nobody. So Allah created certain people deviated, certain people not Muslim, certain people outside the, the fold, certain people following a different path as a gift for me and you. Firstly, for us to check what path we are walking on and then to engage in an act of worship known as calling people towards goodness. Had they all been on goodness, that act of worship would have been closed and sealed a long time ago. So whenever you see a person deviated, rather than thinking, let me beat them up and kill them and this and that, those are all satanic and devilish thoughts. You rather say, Ya Allah, I thank you for the opportunity. Giving me an opportunity to go out to this person and tell them, brother, don't do that, it's wrong. Just that statement of yours can earn you paradise. And we don't realize that. We look at a man entering a nightclub. Instead of thinking, how best can I get him the message of Allah? We start going to spread rumor about him. What type of Muslims would we be? So we need to make sure we clear our hearts.
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us and our offspring from night clubs, from drugs, from alcohol, from gambling, from adultery, from all these sins of the age. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our offspring from being gay and lesbian. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really grant us protection. The environment out there is pretty hostile and it is becoming more and more difficult to live in an environment which does not respect any form of morality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our deen and our iman. This is why we have months like this. We are sitting here. We're not going to be having lunch today. Our lunch today is to listen to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to digest the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make resolutions before the month comes to an end so that we can improve ourselves at least in one way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. And this is why the rest of the verse Allah says, Wala yaznun. The true believers of Allah do not commit zina. They don't commit adultery and fornication. Allahu Akbar. Look at how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Immediately after that he says, وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَٰلِكَ يَلْقَ أَثَامًا يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدُ فِيهِ مُهَانًا Whoever engages in these three, associating partnership with Allah, committing murder or committing adultery, Allah says for them the punishment will be doubled. And they will be entering into hellfire and they will receive in there a punishment for a very very long time or forever may allah safeguard us and immediately after that he says illa allahu akbar that is the mercy of allah illa meaning there is an exception allahu akbar an exception so those who have committed sin allah says don't lose hope we have an exception people who committed a sin with no repentance those are the ones who are doomed but Allah says the exception of those who engage in repentance and do good deeds after their repentance. Allah says, we will take the sins they committed and convert them into good deeds and put them onto the right side of the scale when they come on the day of Qiyamah, their sins will have been converted into acts of worship because of the two conditions that they met. One was istighfar and tawbah and the other was after they repented, they only did good. They didn't go back to that. So when you seek forgiveness, you are forgiven. But when you seek forgiveness, and after that seeking forgiveness, you've never gone back to that again. Allah says, now you deserve that deed of yours to be converted into gold. The bad deed is converted into salah, into hajj, into zakah. Some of us have never made hajj. May Allah make it easy for us to go, inshallah. And some of us cannot afford it. But who knows, when we come on the day of Qiyamah, five hajj next to your name. Why? Because you committed so many sins, then you repented to Allah and never repeated them. So Allah says, this was more powerful than five hajj. Allahu Akbar. This is from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ وَإِذَا مَرُوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُوا كِرَامًا Those who don't waste time witnessing that which is in vain, witnessing that which is against the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who do not bear false witness, those who do not watch others bearing false witness and do nothing about it, this is a quality of a true believer that when he passes, إِذَا مَرُوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُوا كِرَامًا when they pass that which is futile, it's not beneficial at all. They just don't waste time with it. They pass it without turning towards it. What this means is in life, there are certain things that are a waste of time. You achieve nothing by it. And Allah says, a true believer will not waste his time with that. I'll give you an example. You have people who are sitting every night, all night, up to 10, 12 at night, sitting and chatting, speaking about anything and everything, Manchester United and Liverpool and this one and that one and Springboks and All Blacks and what have you, and this one scored this and that. If you spoke about it for 10, 15 minutes maximum and you went away, maybe, but for a person every night sitting and chatting, what are they doing? They have firstly their family members, especially those who are married, wife waiting. 
children waiting. Your bed is waiting. Your sleep is calling. And every night you're wasting your time. What did you achieve out of it? Nothing besides getting tired, staying awake, wasting your time. So that waste of time, Allah says, if you're a true believer, you won't even do that. Someone might argue, but I have not done anything haram. Allah says, you haven't done anything haram, you're a Muslim. You're a Muslim, you've submitted, but you want to upgrade from Windows 98, which is now almost defunct, to Windows 7, then what you do, abstain from that as well. We have new software for you. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So those who don't waste their time, no time wasting. Then a very, very important one. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُوا عَلَيْهَا صُمَّا وَعُمْيَانًا Allahu Akbar. Allah says, those whom, when they are reminded of the verses of Allah, they don't turn a blind eye towards those verses. What are we doing today? We are reminding ourselves, myself included, of the verses of Allah. Allah says, a true believer, when Allah's verses are read, it shakes them up and wakes them up. They do not turn the blind eye and a deaf ear against the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never. When you hear something, it shakes you, it wakes you, it makes you make a resolution and you work towards it. Remember, the environment outside the masjid is totally different from that in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are seated here in total serenity. Our hearts are in the softest conditions. We are in the month of Ramadan on a Friday in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At this midday peak hour, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala softened our hearts. If you want to make a resolution, don't say I will do it today, today, later on or tomorrow. Say I have done it now. Because this type, this feeling you have in your heart right now is not going to come back. And it will leave you as you leave the masjid if you're not careful. Because out there, we told you moments ago, it's a hostile environment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our eyes. So never turn a blind eye to a solid message. Think about it. Give it deep thought. If the source is proper and authentic, surrender to it. So whenever you hear a message of deen, ask yourself, what is the source? If the source is proper and authentic, confirmed, you surrender to it completely. Allah says, you die in that condition. Do you know what happens to you? You just get taken straight to Jannah with no reckoning, no hisab, no kitab, no adab, no nothing. You were ready to surrender to Allah whenever the verse came to you. Allah says, for you in return, you go straight to paradise. We don't want to talk about what other deeds you did. It's enough. The fact that there was dedication from you was enough. May Allah make us dedicated. So this is why I never turn a blind eye. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا The true believers of Allah are those who make a dua for their offspring as well and for themselves. Not just for themselves but for their offspring as well. Those who say, Oh Allah, bless us with offspring. Who will be the coolness of our eyes, Ya Allah, and make us the leaders of those who are conscious of you. Make us one of those who are conscious and our children as well. Make them a source of coolness for us. How many people today complain about their children? How many people today would look at the child and cry to say, my child is on drugs. My child has gone into that bad habit. My daughter, astaghfirullah, may Allah protect us, has engaged in this type of activity. She has spoiled our reputation. This person has done that. People are complaining primarily because we ourselves maybe have not surrendered properly to the command of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that surrendering. Thereafter, we need to make dua. And live your life in such a way that not only dua, but together with dua, you look at the means of achieving what you've asked for. You need to look at the means of achieving what you've asked for. Musa alayhi salatu was salam was totally helpless when he got to the sea and behind him was the Pharaoh. Totally helpless. Nothing, no way. He knew in his heart, Allah is with me. And he did not just say, Ya Allah, oh, make for me a way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Musa, put in your effort. We'll show you what we'll do. What is your effort? Strike the sea, then see what happens. He didn't just stand there and watch. 
Allah says, you make an effort, play your role, then you see what we do. So he struck, then the sea opened up and they walked through, as you know. So without your effort, your children are not suddenly going to become, through a dua, the most pious of people. You need to live properly. You need to be a good role model. You need to know what the word I love you means when it comes to your children. Many of us think when you tell your child, I love you, my son. I love you, my daughter. That means when they say, dad, I need this. You say, no problem. Here it is. Dad, I need that. No problem. Here it is. And The hadith speaks about how a mother will give birth to her boss. Why? Whatever your child says, Hadr. It's fine. It's done. Consider it done. Then your child, what will happen? They ask you for a phone at the age of 8, 9, grade 3, 4. They want a cell phone. What happens to a cell phone? It is a hell phone at times. May Allah protect us. May Allah open our doors. It wreaks havoc in our lives. Firstly, to start with, marriages break because of hell phones. So if you know where C is, A, B and C, it will stop there. But if you don't know and you slip it all the way to H, what will happen? It becomes a hell phone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So it's important for us to make this dua for our children and to try our best to bring them up in the best way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter ends these verses. He ends these verses. What does he say? Ula'ika yujazawna al-ghurfata bima sabaru. Straight. Allah says those who have these qualities will be granted a special place in paradise. Al-Ghurfa, known as Al-Ghurfa. It is a special room, a special abode, a special palace. Khalidina fiha hasunat wa They will dwell therein forever. What a beautiful place to be living in forever. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness in the dunya and the akhirah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors. I hope I've said words that have motivated myself to begin with and then all of us. And at the same time, I hope and pray that all of us have made resolutions here and now to improve ourselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, become steadfast. Leave your bad ways. Kick out those habits. Wallahi, it won't pay. When you are on your deathbed, you will smile thinking, Ya Allah, I left these bad habits for you. We don't want to be those whom, when we are, are on our deathbeds, all our sins come and start haunting us. Allah protect us. I have witnessed people in Sakarat and I have sat next to people who've passed away in front of my eyes and I've seen different types of people. There was a man who shook me really by telling me, you know, all my sins, it's as though they're right in front of me. And he's telling me and he's about to die. A few minutes later, he was gone. And that shook me and I said, I will share it with the Ummah inshallah. Because Allah says, Allah says a day will come when a person will see all his good deeds right in front of him and all his bad deeds as well he'll see them right in front of him hoping that there was a huge distance between him and them and Allah says, Allah warns you regarding Allah. Allah warns you regarding the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those who have engaged in tawbah and repentance and istighfar and changed their lives when these golden opportunities have come, those are the ones who succeeded. But as for the rest who don't want to change, may Allah not do that to us. They have only themselves to blame. And I'd like to end by bringing to your attention the fact that we are so fortunate. We have food, we have drink. We do not have bombs raining on our heads as the people in Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them peace. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard them and grant them victory. May Allah grant them peace and stability, security. When they are reading Salatul Taraweeh, one wonders in what condition their hearts are. Wallahi, we are taught to read Salah as though it is the last Salah we're ever going to fulfill. There are certain people who have no option but to think in that way because they are hearing the big booms and the bangs right around them. Imagine if that had happened to us, the level of Iman would go up. Are we going to wait for a day when that happens for our Iman to be boosted? Or will we let it happen to us now that our Iman is boosted? So there are people who are suffering there. Their food is restricted, their clothing restricted, their movements restricted. 
everything restricted over and above that being bombed pillaged atrocities committed against them they do not know when they leave the home whether they're going to come back or not and even whilst they're in the home they don't know if they're going to spend the next few moments alive may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us to assist them and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to help whether it is financially whether it is by our own selves whether it is through dua whatever it is we need to make dua for all those I'm only giving you an example the reason I give you the example is something historic has occurred from this part of the world we have the Africa one aid convoy that inshallah will be arriving there and we need to not only support but make dua the idea is solely humanitarian we as Muslims believe in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we are like one body just like in one body if a small organ is in pain the whole body is restless we as the ummah feel this restlessness regarding Gaza regarding Afghanistan regarding Iraq regarding a Somal regarding all these countries whether it is Libya or Syria whatever country it is we feel the restlessness we feel the agitation and we all feel we'd like to do something about it Ya Allah open their doors it is something historic and really assistance rendered from us inshallah to our brethren solely humanitarian the idea is not to engage in anything besides what Allah has asked from us